Hey guys, I received a lot of requests to make a video on the topic of Roger Federer's racket head on his forehand. And what happens on many of Roger's forehand is that he will make contact with the neutral position of the racket head. And then shortly after he has made contact, the racket head will close in this way. And to check this out, all you got to do is go to Google, type in Roger Federer's forehand, then on go on the Google image search and you will see a lot of pictures exactly like this. Roger's racket head is completely flat after contact and this is puzzling to many players and I've done a lot of research on this topic and I know exactly why this is taking place. Let's first talk about how the racket face should be positioned at the moment of contact on the forehand. So the racket face should be neutral and what would happen if you close the racket face is that the ball would have very little chance to go over the net. See the trajectory would go straight down with a closed racket face. Now this might work if you're in close proximity to the net and you get a higher ball then a indeed closed racket face might work out okay but in the vast majority of the forehands you do need a neutral racket face at the moment of contact if you want the ball to go over the net and some players are also confused thinking that you do need a closed racket face to make topspin uh, this is not the case you can make topspin with a neutral racket face topspin is created when we vertically go over the ball in this fashion and we do not need to close the racket face to make this happen you can see here as i'm going vertically over the ball the ball is rotating in this manner and this is indeed topspin and the contact on the forehand is over so quickly that players are not consciously executing any movements of the racket face naturally uh, through repetition and muscle memory, players will figure out, without being conscious of it, how to position the racket face at the moment of contact. So they will at times indeed close the racket face a little bit, uh, possibly if the ball is a little bit higher and if they're closer to the net, and other times, in the vast majority of cases, the racket face will be neutral. So what happens on Roger's forehand? Why is the racket face so severely closing after he makes contact? And Roger is not the only player that has this racket face close after the moment of contact. Other players such as Nadal and Djokovic will also close uh, the racket head after the moment of contact. But on Roger's case, he does do it more frequently uh, when he strikes forehands. So the reason why the racket face is closing is quite simple. Roger is making contact below the center of the string bed. So if we have the center of the string bed here, if we hit the ball, the racket head will remain neutral as we finish the strokes. However, if we make contact below the center of the string bed, the racket face will naturally close. You gotta remember, there's a lot of power being executed on the forehand. If we strike the ball very powerfully below the center, naturally the racket head will close. It is also the case that if you do make contact above the center of the racket, the racket face will open. And you will sometimes see this on the WTA Tour where players will make contact above the center of the string bed and then the racket face will open up. So if you make contact below the center, does this negatively affect the stroke? And not at all, you are still hitting the ball clean. This is not to be confused with a frame shot. If you hit the ball too close to the frame, of course you will lose control of it and not be able to keep the ball in play. However, if you make contact uh, slightly below the center, somewhere in this area, you will still be able to regain full control of the ball. And Roger often hits these type of forehands for winners. So is Roger consciously hitting the ball at this spot? Uh, not at all, Roger is not aware of the moment of contact just like any other player. It's over in a couple of milliseconds and it's just simply too fast for any human brain to process. But what happens on Roger's forehand is a combination of several factors. Number one, he plays with an Eastern grip. This is important to understand why this is happening. So in an Eastern forehand grip, the hand will be more behind the racket when contact is made. And now Roger's swing path is an up, across, and back swing path. And what he does, he will start the up part of the swing a tad prior to making contact with the ball. So if here's, this is the ball, and Roger will start coming up on the ball prior to making contact so that then naturally he meets it below the center of the string bed. So if he comes at it straight like this, he will meet it in the middle, and that does take place sometimes on Roger. But often he will start going up before he makes contact with the ball, naturally resulting in a contact that's below the center of the string bed. And also, because Roger's using an Eastern grip, because his hand is more behind the racket, naturally, there's less resistance to the racket 
and the racket is more likely to close compared to having a semi-western grip where the hand will be more underneath the racket and there's more support there the racket is less likely to close when this grip is used okay guys so let's try out a few forehands so first i'm going to hit my normal forehand in a semi-western grip and we'll take a look at how the racket face is positioned when i make contact and what happens immediately after contact so here's my normal forehand and so i'm pretty sure that the racket face was neutral here So let's try to do the Roger Federer forehand and we're going to go into an Eastern grip and I also I'm going to start visualizing an upwards type swing before I make contact. So I'm going to try to go a little early on the up across and back motion and let's see what happens uh, to the racket head as a result of that. So you can see on that forehand that the racket face did indeed close and all I had to do to make this happen is initiate the upward part of the swing a tad early. And just to show you that this doesn't influence the stroke in a negative way, I'm going to try to do it again. So I'm going to be in Eastern grip and I'm going to try to initiate the upward part of the swing early. And even if you have a semi-western grip or a western grip, you can benefit a lot from initiating the upward part of the swing early. Now, the racket face might not necessarily close, but this is something that you're not going to be conscious of anyway. So let me try a few of my forehands, and I'm also going to try to initiate the upward part of the swing a little bit early. So even on those forehands, the racket face might have not necessarily closed as much as it did uh, with the Eastern grip, but I felt like I gained a lot of control. I felt the ball had a lot more safety on it. And with a lot of repetition, as I gradually start putting power on this particular shot, this can turn into a really good forehand where I can have a lot of spin, I can have a lot of control, and I can get a lot of power. 